morning. You're listening to Premier Christian Radio. It's five minutes past 11. I'm Maria Rodriguez. Right now, I'm going to chat to Martha Collison. You might recognise the name from her appearance in TV's Great British Bake Off, but she's also known for her Christian faith. And she joins me now in studio to share something of her journey of faith, her TV appearance, and also a recent trip she's made to Cambodia. Good morning to you, Martha. Morning. Martha, let's journey back. When you were a young girl growing up, what sort of exposure did you have to faith? Um, so I was lucky enough to grow up in a Christian family with both my parents are Christians. My dad is an elder at our church, which is Ascot Life Church in Ascot. Um, so I had a really kind of lucky upbringing. Um, went to church every Sunday, um, Christian camps in the summer. I'm just really lucky to be under that kind of parenting. Sometimes uh, growing up, people will have a moment where they think, oh, I don't want to go to church. Have you had any moments where you thought, actually, I'm not too sure about this faith thing? No, <laughs> I love my church. I think it's it's a really great place full of family and friends. Um, I've never really not wanted to go because it's always been fun and exciting. That was great. Now, of course, I mentioned at the beginning there, a lot of people will know you from television's The Great British Bake Off. Did you ever have any idea the sort of the impact that being on television would have on your life? No, not at all. I... It's every day I wake up and I'm just like, did that really happen? Did that? It's just crazy. We, you never get used to people knowing who you are when you don't know them. It's a really weird kind of situation when you go out to Nando's and people are staring at you and getting your autograph. It's, it's just because I'm so normal. I just grew up in a small town, normal life. And it just seems so bizarre that this has happened to me. Do people ha- generally have the courage to come up to you and ask you for a selfie or, or, or talk to you a little bit about your experiences? When the show was on, every time I would go out, it would just be crazy. And at school, because I went back to sixth form to year 13, the kids at school loved it. They thought it was amazing. And everywhere I'd go, they'd just be like, Mother, <laughs> you're on the bake off, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> and it's just so strange. Have you found, though, that you've had to sort of change your life a bit, almost to sort of be careful to protect yourself, to protect your family? Mm, definitely. You have to really change your mindset and make sure you're grounded because it was quite easy to get all swept up in it and just everyone knowing, not everyone, but lots of people knowing who you are can make you quite egocentric. So you have to remember that like God is in control of your life, that you've been blessed with this experience and this opportunity and use it for the best. So have you got some people around you who can keep you grounded and remind you you are just Martha? Yes, I've got great <laughs> Christian friends, lovely family, and oh, that's fantastic. Part of, part of their role. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, I mean, going out and about, you know, people spotting you must be quite a strange experience. But as far as friendships is concerned, has that, has that been impacted at all? Because you've been busier than usual. Yeah, I think definitely when it was on, it was quite difficult because when you when we were filming it, you wasn't allowed to tell anyone that I was doing it. So there was lots of lying that had to go on between me and friends and me and church. I had to just, I couldn't tell anyone what I was doing. So I was just like, I'm just doing baking again. And that was quite difficult. And then since then, it's been a bit of a whirlwind. And my friends are great. And they've been saying that it's really wonderful. I've got all these opportunities. But I also try and spend time with them because that's also an important part of of growing up. Yeah. Now, you've recently returned from a trip to Cambodia, one of the many opportunities that have opened up <laughs> yes. for you um, as a result of this experience with Tear Fund. Now, it's part of their No Child Taken campaign. So what's this campaign about? Um, so the No Child Taken campaign is about stopping child trafficking. And one child is trafficked every 30 seconds and Tear Fund wants to put a stop to that. So it's just about preventing it happening from the onset. Wow. I mean, that's a staggering statistic when you sort of stop and it's think crazy. about it. It's crazy. Yeah, when you look at your watch, 30 seconds and think about a child... I was doing um, assemblies at my school before I went and I made one child stand up every 30 seconds until the end. So it was 15 minute assembly and you have a whole class of kids in one assembly and that's crazy. Wow, absolutely incredible. So you headed out to Cambodia. I'm sure you must have met lots of people whilst you were out there. But could you maybe share the story of maybe one person that stands out whilst you were in that time out there? Yeah, so when we got to, we went to, we flew into Thailand, to Bangkok, and then we went straight out. So we went to the hotel, checked in straight out into the red light district. Um, just to see where people who were trafficked would end up. And it was such a dark place. I mean, walking through the streets where you've got sex shops and pole dancing clubs right next to family marts, it was just just complete culture shock. And just looking at some of the girls that look the same age as me or younger, and that's their life. And they're there with kind of Disney lanyards or Winnie the Pooh. And it's just, if you can be interested in Winnie the Pooh, how can this be your life? And that really hit home with me, that how sad that was. And then we travelled to a border town in Cambodia where I met a young girl called Nita. 
and she was talking to me as I was interviewing her and she had four siblings and all of them had gone to Thailand and when the girls go to Thailand you don't know what they're doing they could be work but one in three kids will end up in the sex trade and she told me that she didn't really know where they were her mum had died when she was young she was living with her grandmother and her dad had remarried and she was at this sewing workshop that one of the tier fund partners was running with her younger 14 year old sister and I have a sister who's 14 and it was just to see them in that position was just, I couldn't even imagine it but they were being trained in sewing skills and educated in the dangers of going to Thailand, where there's a language barrier, they don't really understand what's going on, and they're trapped in not being paid enough, being in debt, and end up wherever they get sent, really. And it was just quite wonderful to hear her say that So she was scared of going to Thailand, and that was something that had been taught to her by the Tier Fund partners, and that's what needs to happen in more places. Then the kids are educated, they know the dangers, and she was loving learning how to sew. How did it impact you, though, realising that there were other young people sort of your age, the age of your sister, who are in these kinds of situations? It was quite harrowing to find the amount of poverty that there was there. I, mean, I don't really know what to expect, but I wasn't really ready for that kind of mass poverty. No one there really had enough. I looked at every single house we passed. Like People in England wouldn't even dream of spending a night in. But seeing them equipped with skills, so we went to a couple of projects in motorcycle repair and agriculture and baking and seeing them be given a skill, the joy that they have from just one skill was so amazing because in this country we all learn kind of 14 different subjects for GCSE and we're all like, we'll complain about the work and they just are taught one thing and then it changed their life. Mm. Now you mentioned there you were sort of looking in the sort of the accommodation that people were in. What sort of situations were people living in? They just, I was just quite shocked about the amount of people who didn't have access to running water and f- enough food. There's kids everywhere in, in rags begging for food from you. And they have big pots outside their homes where they have the water and they have to pay for it when the water truck comes. Or we asked the translator where they get their water from and he just pointed at a big lake full of dirty water. And it was just. You just forget when you're in this country, when you can get your coffee from Starbucks and your water from your tap, you forget that people don't have that. Tune in to Woman to Woman with Maria Rodriguez, weekdays from 10.35am, only on Premier Christian Radio, where faith comes to life.